Hey everybody, this is Adam from Tungsten Amplification, and today we're looking at the Magnavox 8802 console stereo power amp. Magnavox used these from uh, about 1962 through 1964. It was very similar to the 9304, which uses EL84s, and the 175 and 185 series, which also use 6V6s. This particular one was sent to me recently from across the country, Washington State to be exact, and it was in a non-functioning state, had a lot of hum and buzz, and I think one of the 6V6 tubes was not working. So the first thing I did was what I would recommend anybody do with one of these is replace the power supply capacitors. That's going to be the first step to get you towards a healthy amplifier. Um, the other thing I did to this in the power supply, there was a 100 ohm 10 watt resistor going from the output of the rectifier to the first stage capacitor. And one of the drawbacks of this design, the original 8802 design, is that there's no choke in the power supply and when you turn the original design up loud, the bass gets kind of crunchy. It doesn't really sound good. So I like to add a choke to the power supply. So I took the tap right off the rectifier to the first stage filter cap. That feeds the choke. The choke returns to the second stage filter cap. That goes through a 10K 2 watt resistor to the third stage filter cap. Um, and then I replaced the cathode bypass capacitor as well. The choke that I like to use on these is the Triad C24X. It's a one Henry 50 ohm choke. This is a perfect drop-in replacement. There's two holes already drilled in the chassis and I'll show you when I flip it over. So you don't even have to drill holes, you can just mount it directly. Um, I did have to drill two holes to mount these terminal strip here and this terminal strip here. Um, the other work I did to this, it had been converted to a standalone stereo by another technician. And some of the work was a little bit questionable. I'm not shitting on the other tech, he did the best he could. And it was, an, it was working before the filter cap went out. So you know, kudos to him. He did a really thoughtful job. I liked the way he installed the binding posts. I liked the fact that he moved the input to the rear of the chassis and he did it with, did it with shielded cable, which was done very well. Um, you know, he did a lot of nice work. And when I flip it over, he painted the chassis. He cleaned up the transformers. Like everything looks really nice. Um, there was just a little bit of soldering that I, I didn't like. So I ended up replacing the 470K resistor and the 0047 capacitor on each channel. Um, these Illinois caps were from the original. Wow, my brain just went completely dead. Um, the original conversion. And I just left those in. Illinois capacitor is not my favorite brand. Um, but for signal caps, it's fine, whatever. I would never use them for filter filter caps at all. And if you have an amp that has them for filter caps, I'd recommend to replace them. But that's my own personal opinion. Um, the other thing that I did as I was changing this pair out, when I heated the number five tube pin terminal, um, it literally just came right off. It had broken during the conversion process and it was just tack soldered on. And I've encountered that before on these Magnavoxes. The pins on these 6v6 sockets are not the most sturdy. So what I did, I removed, I don't know if you can see it, but I removed pin six, which is not used from this other socket because it was the most vertically straight. And I was able to just push it straight out and I replaced that terminal there. And it just popped right in, no problem. Soldered everything up, it works fine. Um, and then I was playing it and at one point I noticed the base, the low end just dropped out completely. So I flipped it over and I do what I love to do as a professional technician. I took my Sharpie, my non-conductive probing tool, 
And I started tapping around to see if I could get the symptom to change. I had my other hand in my pocket, so I didn't electrocute myself. And, you know, just went to town, tap, tap, tap. And when I tapped what is the cathode of this 6EU7, I could get the signal to pop in and out. I thought, okay, well, maybe it's the cathode resistor. I came over here just to test, and I tapped this, and it started popping in and out. I'm like, well, it can't be both cathode resistors. It's probably something mechanical in the terminal strip area. So I started probing and tapping around, and I'll try to zoom in here so you can see, because this is the sort of stuff that, as a technician, will haunt you at night, or it'll make you feel like, a true champion, but... Okay. So right down here, there's a wire connecting this terminal right here to ground via that rivet. And the solder blob, the solder connection on this terminal here, the actual ground terminal, even though it had a decent mechanical connection, the solder connection was cold. It wasn't actually connected to the terminal. It was just a blob that was holding onto the wire. And as such, mechanical vibration would cause this connection to either be zero ohms, which is a perfect ground connection, or it would be 56 million ohms, which basically is a big FU to ground, um, not making a connection, obviously. So... I heated those terminals up with my iron and reflowed the solder, and that fixed that problem. But sometimes you run into stuff that is non-obvious and becomes a little bit tedious in the searching for, but when you find it and you fix it, it's a glorious moment. So the sound on this is really good. If you're not familiar with these magnet boxes too, um, there's a couple things you have to do in the conversion process. There's a pair of 390 ohm resistors here. These are known as balance resistors because a lot of the consoles on the AM FM tuner portion, which was separate chassis from this chassis, they had a balance knob, which basically made the sound go from muddy to muddier to clear in the middle. So you put the 390 ohm resistors in there and that replaces, I think what was a 750 ohm pot on the original schematic. And by putting those in, you increase the volume, you increase the punch, you clear up the sound, everything's fine. Um, there's another connection that has to be made in the power supply because, of course, the on-off switch was on the other part of the chassis with the AM-FM tuner. This was buried deep down inside the console. You never saw it unless you were replacing the tubes. But you have to connect these two terminals here so that power flows from the power cord through this, what would have been the turned on switch. Um, this has a power switch installed, which is actually a really nice one. I'll flip this over in just a second. There's a couple other things I'd like to talk about. During this era of Magnavox, the 1962 to 1964 era, these were the Imperial Micromatic consoles because the turntable was the Imperial Micromatic. The 8802 was like the most stripped down circuit. It has the least amount of components within it. The 9304, or really the 9300 series in general, has an additional capacitor. I'm trying to find it here with my eyeballs. It has an additional capacitor going from the plate to the cathode, I believe. I'm looking right the right thing. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Going from the plate to ground. It's 100 microfarads, so it's 100 picofarads. Silver mica. In this one, or in the 9304 I have, it's a ceramic. But in this amp, I wanted to put those capacitors in to see what effect they would have on the sound. There's an article on Audio Karma Forum, I think written by Dave Gillespie, and he goes into a long post about 
how adding those capacitors, I believe, will increase the bass stability by rolling off the bass at a slightly higher frequency, but to the ear it sounds more pronounced, and I could go with all that. You know, that all sounds reasonable to me, and, you know, psychoacoustics are a, a unique and personal phenomena. So I went ahead and I put some 100 picofarad silver micas across from the plates to ground, and, uh, I don't know, it just didn't do it for me. Um, and that was that. I tried it, it made the sound a little bit more harsh to my ear and perhaps I did not implement it correctly. Maybe there was something lost in the translation, but it just wasn't for me. So I took this back to stock form and it sounds great. It's balanced, it's got clear highs, really pronounced mid-range. Um, the bass is not overwhelmingly strong, but it's present. You know, you can feel it. Um, these stereos weren't meant for modern music. You know, they were built in 1964. They were meant to reproduce elevator music and classical music and pop music of the day. Um, I love them for jazz. I've heard details in albums that I've owned for decades that I'd never heard before until I got myself one of these stereos. So here's a view of the top. Here's the choke that I added, that triad original output transformers. The guy that worked on this before did a nice uh, hammer tone on the power transformer and bell. He added a power switch. He put a knob on the, the hum balance control, which is in the filament circuit, which I just leave in the middle. Um, this is where he relocated the input to the back panel, added the binding posts, adding a fuse, um, added this nice paint job. Um, looks like his company name was Resounding Audio, Resounding Amplification, sorry. And, uh, you know, I've seen a few of these. He added the nice wood trim around here, and it's stained. And then he kept the original Magnavox logo, which is great. I have the bottom panel off. There's a little fiberboard bottom panel, and then there's four rubber feet. Like, as far as a Magnavox conversion, this is really all you could ask for. It just needed a little bit of help. It needed new filter caps. And, uh, man, this is thing, it's going to work for another 50, 60 years. No problem at all. Anyways, I just wanted to share my love for these things. I have an 8802 still in the console that's been in my shop for almost a decade. I've got a 9304 still in the console that's in mint condition. I haven't even touched it yet. I've got another 9304 chassis that's in mint condition. It still has the Mullard EL84s. I'm going to do a conversion on that soon, and I've got a local woodworker that's going to build me a, a nice trim piece for it and a base. So I'll have that for sale, I don't know, maybe in the next three or four months. I'll try to do it. I've got another 9304 that's kind of a junker that has been my test bed for experimenting on in my shop and trying different mods, and that's pretty well dialed in. Um, these are just great stereos. You know, you can pick up just a bare chassis on eBay for about 300, 350 bucks, and usually it'll include all the tubes, and the beauty of these is that they ran the tubes at a very low voltage. Like the power tubes in this one, I think they're running a 285 plate volts on a 6V6, which is nothing. Those tubes will easily last 20, 30 years. So if you find one that has the original Mullards or the original Sylvanias in it, there's a good chance those tubes are fine and you can run on them for decades, no problem. Um, but this is one of the best values in entry-level tube audio, in my opinion. I'm not an audiophile by any stretch. I kind of like this mid-fi type of stuff because... It really emphasizes the frequencies that my ears are tuned to, the guitars, the saxophones, you know, the vocals. Um, it's, it's really a spectacular beast. Um, I do the conversion on these. If you just want me to do the electronics and restore that, you're looking at about, I don't know, $300 for a recap and to make sure that everything under the hood is working properly, add the balance resistors. Um, if you want a full conversion with the wood trim, all the binding posts and everything, you're probably looking at closer to, let's say, 500 bucks or so. And this is in 2025 pricing, in case you're watching this in the future. Um, you know, get in touch. My website is www.tungstenamp.com, T-U-N-G, 
S-T-E-N-A-M-P. Um, well, I guess that's it. Hope everybody's safe, happy, playing music, listening to music, doing something artistic. It sure beats watching TV and letting your life waste away. Anyways, that's enough philosophy for me. Have a good one.